we asked you to think baseball, and we asked you, who was the last American League catcher to hit 20 home runs in six straight seasons since Brian McCann did so in the National League, and he now goes to the Yankees. And the answer, yes, former Yankee, the all-time great Yogi Berra, who did it 10 straight years for the Bombers, 1949 to 1958. Time for the Clubhouse Conversation. We have Jay Jaffe of Sports Illustrated and Mike Petriello of Fangraphs. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. It's good to have you here. All right, your thoughts. We talked about Peralta. Your thoughts on Peralta. You know, I didn't like it at first, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense because the money was shocking, but $13 million a year is kind of the going rate for a guy of this level. You know, Shane Victorino, Michael Bourne, Nick Swisher, those kind of guys, they make about that, and that makes sense for him. And the money really makes sense for the Cardinals, too, because if you look at their roster, they've got a couple of big names, you know, uh, Wainwright, Holiday, but they've got these guys that are making nothing for the next three or four years. You know, by the time those guys make money, these big contracts can be over. They threw in where they were on the win curve, too, because where they are, you spend that extra bit of money, right, because right. you can see they might be battling between the wild part of the division championship for a few years. Yeah, and it makes sense to them, and really the alternatives were Stephen Drew, okay, he's fine, but it costs a draft pick, and beyond that, you know, there's really not anybody out there who's that impressive for them, so I think it really makes sense they've got the money, they're in the right place for it. Jay, these are big signings over, you know, again, before Thanksgiving weekend, I don't know, it feels early anyway is this like a, an example of hey you got to get offense at these defensive positions in McCann or in Peralta yeah I think so especially when you're talking about um, just the, the way that we've got fewer free agents and fewer big ticket free agents on the market teams are scrambling to get to get these and it's very important uh, you know in, t in terms of building a team to get that offense at those defensive positions I, I studied this at baseball prospectus a couple years ago and found that uh, of the top 25 teams in terms of runs above average on both the offensive and defensive sides uh, the, the best teams uh, in terms of the what they got from, from catcher, second base, shortstop, and center field, made the playoffs about 72% of the time. You've got the Yankees with uh, Posada, Jeter, Cano, and Bernie Williams in there. Uh, you've got the Phillies with, with Ruiz and Rollins and Utley and Victorino. Uh, the Braves with Javi Lopez and Andrew Jones. Uh, that, that accounts for a lot of them, but in general, it's, it's just it's a great place to, to gain a few wins on the opposition. You know, we're like the Yankees, Yogi Berra, Mickey Mantle for a decade yeah, going, or so. Going, going further yeah, back, yeah, yes, right. absolutely. Also, how often do these guys get out to the market, Mike? We were talking about this before the show. So this is kind of rare. Well, for, for, sure. for Brian McCann, it's, it's almost never. In the last 10 years since uh, Ivan Rodriguez signed for $40 million, the only catcher who's gone to a new team uh, for more than about $15 million was John Buck. Three years, $18 million. You just well, don't find a guy like Brian McCann out there ever, and that's why it's important for the Yankees to upgrade over the terrible catching that they had last year. That surprises me. Again, until you think about it, Jay, right? You think, oh, yeah, not many big catchers hit the market. It's true, but, the, but the, on the other side of the coin, what we see is the catchers who've got as much mileage as McCann does by age 30 with a 1,000 games caught or so don't actually deliver very much value over the rest of their careers. Uh, when I looked at this, uh, of all the catchers, I think there are about 30 of them who've got 1,000 games caught by age 30. Just six of them since World War II have been worth at least 10 wins above replacement using the baseball reference uh, wins above replacement stat. Uh, that's not very many. That includes guys who stayed at the position and guys who shifted like Ted Simmons and Johnny Bench. Uh, it's, mm. you know, we're, we're, I think we're overestimating the value. That said, there's a lot to be said for McCann's pitch framing, which is some hidden value that doesn't get incorporated into war. He was one of the top, top five in the league, uh, in, in the majors in that department this year, and he's been consistently uh, towards the top in most years. Are we thinking he'll be good in that park? Or is that mostly just anecdotal? We think, oh, lefty in the Yankee Stadium is going to be even better. Yeah, I mean, that effect gets overstated a little bit, but I certainly think it makes sense for him. He's going to go from a park that's relatively average for left-handed hitters go to a park that's above average left-handed hitters. I think that's going to help his projections. And if you look at the steamer projections next year, they've got him down for, you know, 27 homers, uh, nearly five wins, which may be, you know, a little much, but if you consider he'll get some more playing time at DH than he might have in the National League, you know, that's a huge improvement over what they had last year, which was one of the worst catching situations yeah. in baseball. He, uh, he doesn't strike out much. Does that mean anything to how he will age? Or no, not really? I don't know that's going to make that much of a difference. I mean, he's he's a good all-round player. You're not buying him for one thing. He's not just a defensive player. He's not just a home run hitter. He can do a lot of things well, and I think that's going to help him, you know, as he inevitably, as Chase says, ages you know, sooner than other players would. Jay, I put him through the shredder last week, and I, I, I see two distinct halves of his career when he was coming up, and he was a monster. This is the guy who was slugging over 500. You can see there it is, age 22 to 25. He came up young, 357, 506, if you look at it with, uh, through the prism of on-base slugging. And then, now you go from uh, 26 to 29, 342, 445, uh, or 444. Which guy do you think he'll be for the Yankees? I think he's going to be closer to the latter. I mean, you know, the problem is he's had some injuries. And he got the shoulder surgery. Uh, as he goes into his 30s, he's, you know, he's going to he's going to regress a little bit, even with the easier ballpark, and, and that, that is a concern. And, you know, by the end of this deal, I think we're going to be talking about a guy who's, you know, another obstacle for the Yankees to improve.